slow, slow today. back out and start it over again. Ryan, we have about a half an hour um, until we get to executive session stuff. If you have other things that you need to do. Sure, that's fine. Um, I can, uh, I can, uh, you want me to call back at 530? No, you don't have to. You can you can stay here and you know hang out. I just I just don't want you to think we're going right into executive session. Oh no no no! I understood that. I just I you know I'm traveling. I just wanted to make sure that I had the had a good connection. Okay. Um, so you know I'll just mute I'll just mute myself and I'll just hang back and and, and listen and then um, if anything comes up during the executive session relative to the police union, I'll be here. Okay. Perfect. Great. Tim, you want to just record it and post it later? Yeah, that might be what we're going to have to do because it's kind of oh. like freezing right in the middle of what we're doing here. Yeah, I don't want it to freeze in the middle of the meeting, so I would rather right. just... Okay. All right, I'll abandon that then. So you are good to go? Okay, good evening. I would like to call the um, 5 o'clock meeting to order of June 22nd, 2020. Um, the first thing I'd like to do is welcome Trevor Matthews to the Board of Selectmen. Congratulations and welcome. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay. Yay. <laughs> um, the second thing we want to do is um, we have already reorganized the Board of Selectmen. So um, the uh, position that is available right now is um, Chairman of the Personnel Board. So I would entertain a motion to um, have uh, Trevor be chair of the personnel. Second that. You, you want to make that motion, George? Oh, I thought you made it, but I'll no, make it. it. Okay, uh, great. Motion Trevor. made to Thank make you. Trevor uh, chair, chair of the personnel board. Thank you. Trevor, do you want to second that? Second it. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, Aye. Uh, Selectman Grunwald? Aye. Selectman Matthews? Aye. And Selectman Pacheco? Yes. Um, Trevor, the reason why we have to do um, a roll call vote is because we're um, not live and in person, but because we're recording. So um, because we're recording our live stream, we have to do a roll call vote um, because of open meeting law violations. So. Understand. Um, thank you. All right, um, request for emergency liabilities in excess of appropriation related to the out-of-pocket costs for FEMA and COVID-19 um, costs. David? Uh, uh, I did have a conversation with uh, Kim today to confirm what the intent of it is. Uh, we are seeking $60,000 in reimbursable costs from FEMA. Um, the purpose of this is to let us spend that money so that we can then uh, be reimbursed at a future date. We do anticipate that that amount uh, will be capped at $60,000. So we're asking for the authority to um, expend funds in excess of appropriation up to $60,000 uh, to uh, seek reimbursement from FEMA for COVID-related uh, uh, costs. Okay, does the board have any questions? Okay. Yeah. What kind of well, what kind of costs are we talking about here? Just out of curiosity, is it uh, uh, all PPE kinds of and costs. things of that nature? Yeah. Exactly. PPE, um, uh, supplies, uh, wipes, uh, anything, face shields, uh, any improvements to capital buildings we've had to make uh, in terms of making the buildings uh, safe uh, for uh, our employees, uh, such as barriers and there's a, there's a whole list of things. We've, we've been saving all of our expenses 
uh, to to doc. We have to document what we spend in order to get the reimbursement. Um, we uh, project that that reimbursement will be somewhere in the neighborhood. We're going to have to spend somewhere in the neighborhood of sixty thousand dollars, but we're going to get that money back once we document those costs and they're considered legitimate costs on the part of FEMA. So that's the intent. All right. All right. Thanks, Ed. Um, and that would also include part-time wages and overtime wages for public safety as well. So that those wages are included in the 60,000 at this time. So I'll entertain a motion to um, approve the uh, spending for emergency liabilities and excessive appropriation in the amount of $60,000. Motion made. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Alderman Grunwald? Aye. Selectman Matthews? Aye. And Selectman Pacheco? Yes. Passes unanimously. Did you want me to read through the agenda? Yeah. Or do you, okay. Yep. Uh, so next on the agenda is uh, to award bids and approve contracts for fiscal year 2021 roadway material. Uh, and those are highway salt is for Eastern Minerals Incorporated. Crack sealing would be go to uh, Seal Coating Incorporated. Uh, I forget what BIT stands for, but uh, uh, that concrete at plant is TL Edwards. Uh, uh, concrete in place is PJ Keating. Cold planing is also PJ Keating. And assorted stone seals, that single, double, 20% rubber and shimming, all for all states asphalt incorporated. The dollar amounts are actually in the packet for the board. The uh, BIT is uh, bituminous. That's the one. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I can give you a little background here. Uh, we, through the highway department, had placed this out to bid. We do it every year. Around this time of year, uh, it has to go uh, in the newspaper, has to be advertised in the combines. Uh, they're posting notices that we have to comply with in terms of posting at the, the town hall and, and, and the like. And as a result, all of the uh, companies that are listed here submitted bids as well as other companies, but these were the, the uh, lowest bids in each of the designated categories uh, that we were seeking for the upcoming fiscal year. I'll entertain a motion to approve as recommended by the Highway Surveyor. Motion made. Do you hear Do you have me? a second? Yes, thank you. Do you have a second. second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Grunwald? Aye. Selectman Matthews? Aye. And Selectman Pacheco? Aye. All right, so next on the agenda is the, to sign the Memorandum of Agreement with Treasurer Collector Jessica Thomas. Do I have a motion to approve? Motion made. Do I have a second? second. All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Nay. Okay. All right, uh, Selectman Grunwald? Aye. Selectman Matthews? Aye. And Slecken Pacheco? Uh, no. All right. All right. Um, Freetown letter. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Tim. <laughs> Freetown screw letter to mass development. Okay. Um, I had uh, previously been talking to the board about this issue. I am at a disadvantage in that the letter that I wrote and sent out to you um, this afternoon uh, is on the computer that um, failed. So I don't have that letter in front of me, but basically uh, the issue is this. Um, the town had uh, received uh, $465,000 in funds from mass development uh, approximately five or six years ago uh, for the purpose of uh, uh, environmental remediation on a parcel of land known as the Freetown Screw Site. Uh, that remediation did take place. Uh, we actually knocked the building down at that point. And it was, uh, it's basically just a vacant lot. Uh, it's surrounded by a fence. Uh, it's relatively small uh, compared to the uh, property that's adjacent to that, which is the uh, Akushnet parcel. Uh, we also had a study done <clears throat> around the same time uh, that proposed that we use the, the Freetown Screw property that we approach a Kushnet and talk to them about the probability of taking a parcel of land in a Kushnet that's adjacent to the Freetown Screw property, combining those two properties in um, 
proposing a 60 unit senior housing project as well as a 3,000 square foot commercial building uh, on the two properties together. In the process of reviewing uh, the, uh, it, let me note also that the uh, town of Christian had, that parcel in the Christian was in tax title. The parcel in Freetown is in tax title. There was a town meeting in both communities. The town meeting in the Christian voted essentially to allow us to uh, take possession of the Christian parcel, but that would require uh, a, a, uh, an act of the legislature to do that. Um, upon reviewing uh, the Freetown parcel and then reviewing the Christian parcel with our environmental consultant, uh, concerns were raised uh, regarding uh, a potential for additional remediation on our parcel, uh, as not as probably as significant as the potential for re remediation on the accushionate parcel. Uh, there was a concern raised about a swale uh, that ran across the accushionate parcel and ran into a lagoon that is on the property. And uh, we had a discussion about it and we talked to uh, SERPED, uh, Ransom Environmental Mass Development, uh, about, well, geez, you know, what's the potential impact of that property? Not knowing specifically, you know, how, uh, what was there and how we were gonna remediate it. Uh, the thought was at the time uh, that, uh, that, well, a developer would be responsible for uh, if we put it out to bid the two parcels together, the developer would be responsible for uh, the cleanup associated with cleaning up the two parcels. The problem then becomes a, a financing issue. One uh, that uh, if we just have the Freetown parcel, the project uh, financially can't go forward because there isn't enough, um, uh, the margins aren't strong enough for us to, to build that size of a project on our existing site. The other part is if we join the two communities into one part, we have the two communities combine the two parcels into one, uh, that we would become the owner of record of, of that parcel as being the owner of record of the Freetown parcel. Um, the concern there is, is that being the owner of record, uh, there is a certain limit of liability in terms of overall uh, uh, liability that the town would be responsible for, would be responsible for, but there is, uh, by being an owner of record, potential liability associated with owning a parcel of land that is contaminated, whether that would fall back to the town. We did, I did discuss with uh, Mass Development our concerns about that. Um, the, the second part of that whole equation is that the accushionate parcel um, even if we were to take that parcel and build the project that we were talking about, whether the developer would be able to get funding to build on that parcel it, through traditional financing, where, because banks generally require a 21E, which is an environmental assessment, uh, because they basically want to ensure that their investment, if it's in the several millions of dollars, that uh, those funds will be able to be repaid. That's why they're, they're in the business of making money off the money they lent. So uh, there's, a, there's a question about that. Mass development potentially could be the, the financier for that. But it comes down to a, a third component, which is if we built that parcel and the majority of the senior housing is in on the Krishna parcel, do we then uh, they then Freetown residents anymore uh, because the parcel is in the Cushnet. So you have a Freetown Housing Authority senior project in the Cushnet, and you have um, potentially the commercial part in uh, Freetown or some mix thereof. The way you could address that would be having the town annex that parcel um, to uh, the uh, town of Freetown, it would become part of the town of Freetown. That's an addressable concern, but uh, in talking to the chair of the, the housing uh, authority uh, about the project and 
the the optics of the fact that we would be putting a senior center on potentially you know environmentally unsafe land uh we talked about different mitigation whether they could do a barrier uh they wouldn't put foundations in the overall gist was that maybe this isn't the best place to build a senior housing project uh and that uh one option that the town does have is to uh uh, to not take the cushion parcel and assume the liability associated thereof. And two, uh, because our parcel is in tax title, to uh, uh, propose to mass development that we um, uh, exercise our right to auction that parcel and, and see if there's a developer out there willing to take that risk. Um, and the, the process would be, you know, we would do it through an auctioneer or go to the highest bidder. Uh, the potential uses would be limited to whatever is allowable there by zoning. Um, they would have to have their own financing lined up. And the, the, the benefit from that is, is that one of the key components of the original agreement, I think there was an assumption that the $465,000 was a grant and that didn't need to be repaid. However, uh, look, after getting involved with the project, I learned that that wasn't the case, is that if the town doesn't fulfill its, its fiduciary responsibility and dispose of the, of the parcel in Freetown, then it's gonna be responsible for repaying that $465,000. So in talking to mass development, it was suggested that maybe we should say, all right, we're not going to do the senior housing there. That might be a better site in town that we could do that kind of project. But we will uh, fulfill our re obligation and do our due diligence in terms of um, uh, marketing that property and selling it at auction. Once we do that, our, our obligation to repay the $465,000 uh, will go away. Um, once again, this is all subject to approval by mass development. What I would like to do is put together, I put together a letter. Uh, it's, a, it's a draft number two. I thought of some things on, on the ride uh, that I wanna add to that. So that's not gonna be the final letter, but that gives you sort of an overview of how I'm approaching this issue and how I think that that's the best way at this point for us to move forward regarding the Freetown Screw property. Any questions? Lisa, you're muted. Am I muted? Nope, you're good. <laughs> no, you still go if, if, you were, if you were you're muted, we would have stopped you a long time ago. <laughs> no, 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 you're not muted. Do not. <laughs> I just talked for 10 minutes. Oh, no. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, I was muted because the dogs were barking, sorry. Um, there is some wordsmithing that has to take place in that letter. Also in the first paragraph, you, um, it's actually where, uh, it's the town of Akushnet, um that we're supposed to purchase the land from, not the town of Freetown. So you just have to make that, that adjustment. Uh, like um, I said, that was draft, you know. Right, I think that the gist of the, of the um, letter is in fact, what we had talked about previously. We also talked about sending this over to the Economic Development um, Committee for um, any perspective that they might have on this as well. So I'll entertain a motion to after the um, after we have all gone through the letter and made our suggestions that we um, uh, vote to send this off to Mass Development. Well, to be clear, you want us to read the letter. We're not gonna vote on this today. Yeah, no, 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 we can vote to send it after, if, if anybody wants to hold it up, we can, but um, if there's no holes on it, we can send it off to, after we all review it. Oh, okay, all right, okay. motion, motion okay. made. Do you have a second? Second. Do you have anything, any questions, anybody? Okay, all those in favor, signify by aye. 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 Okay, uh, Selectman Grunwald. Aye. Selectman Matthews. Aye. And Selectman Pacheco. Yes, thank you. Uh, vote to issue grant for award of Freetown portion of the project cost for Chromebooks for regional school district students and staff to be used for remote learning. And the finance director of the school, Ashley Lopes, is here with us today. There's also an 
interdepartmental transfer regarding the well at Freetown Elementary School. Ashley, do you want to talk to us about this? Sure, which one do you want to talk about first, Chromebooks or the well? We'll do Chromebooks first. Okay. Um, so due to COVID and the remote learning that we've been going through over the course of the year, we found that we needed new Chromebooks um, for our teachers and our staff um, in order to be able to use the licenses we currently have. Um, we, as a regional school district, do not have direct access to the CARES funding that, that the towns have. So I've requested both from both towns if they would issue us a portion of money for us to replace 352 student Chromebooks and 250 faculty Chromebooks um, that we can use for next year. Right now, the state has not come out with what their plan is for learning in September. So we're not sure if we're going to be in the classroom, if we're going to be doing a hybrid model, if we're going to be completely remote learning. So these Chromebooks would really help us in the next year be able to streamline remote learning. Um, and Lake Phil has already agreed to this as well? They did last week. Okay, thank you. Does the board have any questions? Uh, what is the total uh, uh, amount for this? Freetown's portion or the whole amount? Just Freetown's portion. Um, so we've been going back and forth on what year we want to allocate it in, if it's FY20 or FY21. The um, FY20 amount's a little bit larger. It's $79,915.33. Say that. Uh, what was it again, please? Sure. $79,915.33. Okay. Right under $80,000. Okay. Trevor, do you have any questions? Uh, nope. That sounds all set. Okay. I'll entertain a motion to approve um, the Freetown portion of the uh, project cost for the Chromebooks for the regional school district. So 40,000 for Freetown, right? No. No, it, that's our, 79. 79 is our, ours. Oh, oh okay. I, I wasn't clear on that. Lakeville, I want to say it's somewhere 100. Uh, um, Ashley could probably give you the, the, the name. The, we're, we're both splitting it proportionally based upon our assessment ratio. Right. So, so the total all in is um, approximately $185,000. Um, again, that's about 500, um, almost 600 devices to be shared across students and staff. Um, and again, just like David said, that allocation is based on your assessment. Um, so what Lakeville did, they voted the higher amount between the FY21 and FY20 assessment. So they voted $106,000 in their last meeting. Okay. So I'll entertain a motion to approve the 79-915-33. Motion granted. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Blackman Grunwald? Yes. Blackman Matthews? Aye. And Blackman Pacheco? Yes. Perfect. Yeah. Ashley, do you want to talk about the um, well, please? Sure. So um, Freetown Elementary School has two wells on, on camp or on, in their school. Uh, well number two is down right now. We had a vendor come out to do the initial um, look at it, and, and um, it's there. they found that it had failed and we need to replace it. So essentially, we went out. Um, we reached out to three vendors. Um, the lowest bid came in at... $11,178.48. Um, that is for Paul's water work. Um, and then on top of that, there's a small additional fee of about $2,200. I don't have the exact amount. The vendor couldn't give it to me today, but I'll get that to you once I have it. Um, and this is to get well number two back up and, and running. And this is just an interdepartmental transfer, correct? Is that to me? Yes. <laughs> um, I'm not sure how Kim wanted to structure it. I know we had talked about a, a few different scenarios. Um, I know that Kim was hoping to do an FY20 because we had some funds that were going back to the towns. Um, I, can, I can work with the town on however they want to do it. If it's a reimbursement, if you want to pay for it, it's totally up to you guys. The way it's written in here is for an interdepartmental transfer, but um, I'll entertain a motion to approve um, 
the well um, in the amount of not to exceed $15,000 um, as recommended by um, Town of Cotland, Kim Kimberly Fields. Motion made. Do I have a second? Second. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Selectman Grunwald? Yes. Selectman Matthews? Aye. And Selectman Pacheco? Yes. All right. Thank you. Have a great night. Thanks, Ashley. You too. Bye. Thank you. Uh, so, next on the agenda, we have an interdepartmental transfer regarding Medicare. Do I have a, a motion to approve? Um, this is in the amount of $5,000, and this is just a line item change. Yeah, it, it's a transfer from $5,000 from Medicare penalty to med the Medicare uh, account. Uh, can I suggest that we go through all these transfers and put a hold on one that needs to be discussed so we only uh, just take one vote at the end? Can we do that? We can do that. Okay. <laughs> the second one is um, amount requested from the town administrator for $1,300 to um, for town administration in-state travel. Okay. Um, the third one. No, Lisa. Oh, no, well, it's no. actually coming from in-state travel. It's actually to pay uh, part of my wages. That's the, for the administrative assistance uh, uh, overtime? But it's coming from town administrator in-state travel in the amount of $1,300, correct? Yes, that's, that's correct. Okay. All right. Is that good? Tim, yes? Oh. <laughs> yes? Yes. Yes, okay. that's correct. Yep. All right. Thank you. Um, the next one I have from Chuck. This is also um, interdepartmental um, transfers from line items. $1,000 for overtime, $500 for street lamps, $3,000 for highway expenses because there's almost nothing left. Um, but I, I don't think we'll go through all of that because it's already June 4th and we're close to the end. So um, we should be all right. But the next we, one, what? Well, no, I was gonna say money that is from the personnel account for uh, a vacancy that we had that we can now use those funds. Yeah. So, right, it's just an interdepartmental request. It's not going over to the, um, it's not for reserve funds. Um, the next one I have is for the town clerk. The amount requested is 443.52 to be transferred um, because uh, there was some training that needed to be done um, for when the town clerk retires, correct? That is correct. Hey. Do, we, do we know when that is? Uh, oh, because uh, yeah, for early, vote, early voting in for electric training. Yeah. Okay. Um, yes, I don't know that off the top of my hand, but Allie knows. Okay. It's December 31st that she's retiring. Did you get that, George? I didn't get the year. December 31st, this year. This She's retiring this year? Correct. Wow. Okay. Okay, those are interdepartmental requests. Do I have a motion to approve? Motion made. Second. Okay. All in favor? <clears throat> Aye. 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 <clears throat> uh, Selectman Grunwald? Yes. Selectman Matthews? Aye. And Selectman Pacheco. Yes. Okay, the next one is a request for transfer from the reserve fund. It's in the amount of $25,000. The present balance in the account is negative $77,2443. Um, this is to pay for disposal fees for the rest of FY20 because of the recycling um, increase uh, thereof. Okay. The next one is a request for transfer for the reserve fund um, in the amount of $34,366. This is for our um, old colony, um, the portion of our special education money that's due. The next request is transfer from the reserve fund in the amount of $150, and this is for the town moderator. Um, this is the stipends for the special town elections that was uh, town meeting that was scheduled for Saturday, June 20th, 2020, um, and because now he's being paid per meeting. Do I have a motion to um, send these over to the 
Finance Committee for their um, approval. Motion made. Second. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 So Trevor, the transfer from reserve funds, we don't approve those. We just um, sent, we just kind of sign off on them and send them over to um, the Finance Committee and then they do the reserve fund transfers. The other ones are interdepartmental transfer line items, so we can approve those. That makes sense. All right, thank you for the clarification. You're welcome. All right. So we just um, need to do the roll call on that one. Go ahead. Uh, I'm Fleck, sorry. Fleckman Grenwald? Yes. Fleckman Matthews? Yes. And Fleckman Chico? Yes. All right. Freetown Fire and Rescue. Um, these are the uh, uh, write offs for the month of May. Um, contractual allowances in the amount of 110306 and write-offs in the amount of 40975 for a total amount of 151 Lisa, uh, yes. the contractuals, I understand the write-offs are those uh, self-pays that are being written off, do you know? I I think that, uh, see, I get confused on which one is which, but those are the ones, the contractual allowances by Comstar. So the difference between what they charge and what we charge, I think that that's how that is. And the second one is the write-offs for um, those that have not or cannot pay. Oh, that would be the self-pays then. Okay, yeah. yeah. Okay. Does, do we know what portion this write-off is of the overall money collected for the same time period? Just we don't have that. I wouldn't have that handy, but I can get that to you. Okay. But if you want some background on that, uh, yeah. When we set up the ambulance billing, uh, what we decided to do was not bill any self-pay uh, three-pound resident. <clears throat> so people who don't have insurance or whose insurance doesn't cover this would have yep. to pay out of pocket. We, and the rest is uh, basically contractual with the insurance companies. Gotcha, and, that makes sense. Yeah, and but this is really a great uh, deal for the town because it pays for half of the uh, fire department practically, the total budget. I think we collect half a million dollars a year mm -hmm. and the budget a million or so. Okay, all right, thank you. Um, David, can you send the uh, contract, the Comstock uh, contract over to Trevor so he can at least see exactly what we're talking about? I can do that. Okay, yeah. great. Thank you. Tim, where were we? Uh, you need Sorry. a motion and a second to approve this one. Okay, motion made. Oh. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, I'm selecting Grunwald. Yes. Selectman Matthews? Aye. And Selectman Pacheco? Yes. All right. Uh, so next we have a scheduling of public hearing for class two motor vehicle dealers license submitted by Copart Incorporated. Uh, just as a little background, we had previously decided to uh, push this off until we were able to have a proper uh, public hearing with, you know, without any regulations or social distancing or anything like that. But they uh, reached out probably last week or maybe two weeks ago asking for an update on when that might be. Um, I'd like to suggest that we sit down and, and talk to the planning board and also the conservation commission, um, review the plans with them, get their input and then schedule a meeting at that same time. Because I, I we, since this COVID thing started, we haven't really had a chance to talk about it. We have a new selectman and we haven't even sat down to talk to the planning board, so I have no idea where they're at right now. No, I, I agree with that, Lisa. But I would add to that that I don't think we should have a public meeting until we can have a real public meeting that people will attend. I totally agree with you. And I think if we were to have a public meeting where we ask people to attend, um, of course, we would have to abide by the guidelines set by the CDC, and we would probably more than likely have to have it over at the COA under the um, gazebo like we did the last time. Okay. All right. So, Tim, can you skip? Uh, uh, Trevor, do you have any input? Nope. Uh, I agree with you here. This is, uh, I'm interested in 
would like to talk to the planning board and really understand more here. Yeah, I, I think, you know, shooting from the hip is not, not in our best interest. And I think that listening to both the um, Conservation Commission and the Planning Board and getting any recommendations from them is probably a good idea. So, Tim, could you set that up for us? I can reach out to them. I don't know how responsive they would be, but I can certainly ask them. So. Thank you. Yep. Uh, so next on the agenda, we have uh, a set of, of assorted sets of minutes uh, from May 26th, May, uh, June 1st, June 2nd, and June 15th. Do I have a motion to approve? Uh, motion granted. Uh, second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, Selectman Grenwald? Yes. Selectman Matthews? Yes. And Selectman Pacheco? Yes. Town Administrator's Report. Okay, um, <clears throat> I only have a few things. One is I just wanted to acknowledge and thank all of the uh, department heads and volunteers that made the, uh, and as well as Lisa helping us lead the team uh, for our successful annual town meeting and special town meeting. It was definitely uh, something that I have never experienced in 24 plus years of government, <laughs> but it was, uh, it was really, it went really well. I was very impressed by the, the way uh, it took place and, and the, the things that we did to make it happen. So, you know, I want to thank everybody that's part of the team that helped us uh, basically plan it out and, and accomplish it. So, thank you. Um, David, second thing. You're welcome. Uh, I, I agree with what you've just said, but uh, could we get the numbers of attendees that were not uh, officials or employees at the uh, meeting so that uh, you know, we barely made 50 people, and I'd like to know how many of those 50 were selectmen, uh, town employees that were there anyways, and so forth. Uh, we had firemen there. Uh, so it, but the number I'm looking for is how many people that were just voters and not town employees or uh, local officials? Okay, I, I don't. I don't know if we segment out a voter is a voter whether they're in a public official or. Uh, no, I, I, I get that, but it would be good to know. We can do. It. We'll see what we can do. Okay, because I, I, my estimate was that we probably had only twenty-five people there that were just voters and not involved with town. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, okay. Uh, cable advisory committee. Uh, we've been meeting diligently over the past month or so. Uh, we have our first uh, our, uh, negotiation session coming up on July 15th with Comcast. We're, as everybody's aware, we're renegotiating the, the current uh, uh, contract with Comcast in the town. Uh, we have a number of bargaining points, and what I want to do is at the next meeting, uh, invite the uh, Cable Advisory Committee to be party to the meeting so that we can basically inform the board uh, what we're looking at and what we're thinking about doing in terms of uh, our bargaining position and uh, asking the board for any input they may have in terms of uh, something they might like to see or something that they don't feel we should be doing. So, basically clear it through the board so they're aware of what we're carrying forward in terms of what we plan on bargaining. Unfortunately, according to the uh, Mass General Laws, we can't do it in an executive session. So Comcast has, a, has every right to actually watch the meeting so they know right ahead what we're gonna be bargaining for. And we actually got a proposal from them, which I shared with the board today. So, um, you know, I, it's a, I guess it's a really open process. Usually contract negotiations, the parties meet separately and they basically develop their negotiation points and they establish some ground rules and in a typical negotiation, you know, both parties, they, they give and take. Uh, this is a kind of a different situation. So 
uh, I will, uh, like I said, at the next meeting have uh, some information for the board as to what we're uh, proposing to bargain for. Finally, on the street lights, I got notice today from Arden uh, Engineering uh, Construction. They're the company that's been awarded the bid to uh, put up the new street lights. Uh, according to an email that I got today, uh, they're looking to do it. They said they're shooting for Wednesday, uh, 624 and Thursday, and or Thursday, 625. So uh, hopefully this week we're going to have some new street lights up and down. That's all I got. All right. Anybody have any questions for the town those, administrator? Those are LEDs for the sodium vapor. Thank you, David. Does anybody have any questions for the town administrator? Nope. Okay. George, you all set? No, I'm all set. Okay. Tim? Uh, so next we got a uh, personnel board, uh, the appointment of Nicole Davinian as our new library director, which will be effective July 1st. Jerry, do you want to do that? Or do you uh, want me to do it at this time? Uh, but can we, all these appointments, can we go through them and have one vote like we did earlier? We could, but this is a different agenda item. This is, we can combine 16 and 17, but this one's a, a separate because it's a brand new position. Okay, all right. Uh, motion made then. Second. All right, all in favor. Aye. Aye. Uh, Selectman Grunwald? Yes. Selectman Pacheco? Yes. And Selectman Matthews? Yes. All right. Uh, so next we have a couple job postings for uh, assorted va uh, vacancies. Uh, we have for Senior Librarian, Conservation <coughs> Commission Clerk, Finance Committee Clerk, and Assistant Assessor. Do you have a motion to post? Motion made. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Selectman Grunwald? Yes. Selectman Pacheco? Yes. And Selectman Matthews? Yes. Uh, before we continue with this one, Allie, did you have any questions that the board needed to act on for the job posting? I can't remember or not. Um, no, I, I think that uh, I just wanted to know if they had any questions as far as the senior is going to be an internal posting. That's what I plan on doing. Um, the conservation clerk, we had a temporary conservation clerk um, and she has resigned. So now we have to figure out who's going to be the temporary clerk in the meantime. Because um, as everyone knows, except for Trevor, I apologize. Um, Mike McHugh had, was the conservation clerk, but he increased his hours to help in the, assistant, in the assessor's office. So we still have that vacancy now in the conservation um, and we have to fill that because they have um, upcoming hearings that they need to have and they need a clerk to be able to put, do the postings for a uh, legal requirement. And the assistant assessors, that would actually be a appointment not by the Board of Selectmen, it would be an appointment by the Board of Assessors. So I just want to make sure that the um, board understands that it's not your um, appointment, it is the Board of Assessors appointment. Thank you, Allie. Does anybody have any questions? Uh, do not. Okay. Uh, so next on the agenda is a request from town accountant Kimberly Fales regarding fiscal year 2020 vacation and sick time. A motion to, uh, well, anybody have anything to say first? No. Nope. Make a motion to accept. Second. All right, this is a motion and a second to um, allow Kim to carry over her vacation time till the next fiscal year. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, Selectman Grunwald? Yes. Selectman Pacheco? Yes. And Selectman Matthews? Yes. All right. Uh, so next is a request from me, actually, uh, regarding <laughs> fiscal year 2020 vacation time. Hmm, this is a tough one. <laughs> if, if you say no, I'm going to be off for most of this week. So. <laughs> you know, click, you're gone. <laughs> Do I have a motion to um, allow Tim to carry over his vacation time? Motion granted. Do I have a second? second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 
Uh, Selectman Grunwald? Yes. Selectman Pacheco? Yes. And Selectman Matthews? Yes. All right. Uh, so next uh, is appointments. I don't know if you want me to read all through all of them. You missed one, Tim. Did we do um, Kim's, uh, we did our vacation time. Did you do our sick time as well? Did you combine them? Um, I actually skipped over the word. So yeah, we should probably do them both separately. Okay. Do I have a motion to allow Kim to um, carry over her unused sick time? It is by contract um, approval from the Board of Selectmen. Motion granted. Second. All in favor? <laughs> Aye. 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 All right, Selectman Grenwald? Yes. Selectman Pacheco? Yes. And Selectman Matthews? Yes. All right. And did you want me to read through all of the appointments in agenda item 16 or? No. Uh, okay. No. Um, did you, are you going to do Swede and Robbie Joe separately or are you going to do them? Um, well, I can I can read them read them all, or I can just fix, give a little background on them. No, you don't have to. You can just we could just do it all at the same time. Okay. Go ahead. What are we doing? <laughs> oh, I thought you were gonna just uh, read the agenda item, but no, that's oh, all right. Okay, I can I can no problem. Uh, so it's rescind the appointment uh, for Charles Sullivan uh, to the Bristol County Advisory Board, Local Emergency Planning Committee. Priority Development Committee, Regional School Finance Committee, uh, Soil Conservation Board, Southeastern Regional Transit Authority, Task Force Bylaw and Tax Increment Financing Board. Those are all the appointments that he was as uh, a member of the Board of Selectmen. Yeah, just a quick question on that. Uh, is he resigning from those or is that automatic because he's not a selectman? Nope, it's, it's an automatic one. Those are all uh, selectman appointments. So with him no longer being on the board, he can't be any of those. And I'll be having on a future agenda, basically a list of all the, the selectmen appointments and you guys can divvy them up as you see fit. Okay, do I have a motion to rescind those? Motion made. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, selectman Grunwald? Yes. Selectman Pacheco? Yes. And selectman Matthews? Yes. All oh, right. Can we, just, can we just read through all of them and take one vote again? Sure. Uh, so we have a uh, Swede magnet as associate member of the Zoning Board of Appeals, effective June 22nd, 2020. Uh, Robert Jost as associate member of the Zoning Board of Appeals, effective December 3rd, 2019. That one actually just corrects the title. Uh, Gilbert Mar Medeiros to the Board of Registrars, effective April 1st, 2020. Uh, Martin Conseo as election worker, Inspector Teller, effective June 22nd, 2020. Lisa Pacheco as public records clerk, Board of Selectmen, uh, effective June 22nd, 2020, uh, Tax Increment Financing Board is actually already taken care of. Uh, Mike Mata and Mike McHugh as Public Records Clerk for the Board of Assessors, effective June 22nd. Jeffrey Chandler as Signed Certification Officer, effective July 1st. And Trevor Matthews to uh, EMA Public Safety, Local Emergency Planning Committee, and Soil Conservation Board, effective June 17th. Those are some of the other appointments for uh, selectmen that like for the ones we just took away from Charlie. Okay, do I have a motion to approve? Motion granted. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Selectman Grunwald? Yes. Selectman Pacheco? Yes. And Selectman Matthews? Yes. All right, uh, so next to uh, uh, further adjustments for the annual reappointments for fiscal year 2021. Uh, so we have to rescind the fiscal year 2021 reappointment of uh, Robert Jost as alternate member of the Zoning Board of Appeals, Mark Audette as custodial maintenance, Katrina Gonzalez as economic development and finance committee clerk, Charles Sullivan to Bristol County Advisory Board, local emergency planning committee, priority development committee, regional school finance committee, soil conservation board, southeastern regional transit authority, and task force bylaw. Those were all made in error last time. Do you have a motion to rescind as presented? Motion granted. Yep. All right. Second. All those in favor. Aye. 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 Zoom stuff. <laughs> Zoom stuff's tough sometimes. Know. You know? <laughs> uh, Selectman Grunwald. Yes. Selectman Pacheco. Yes. And Selectman Matthews. Yes. All right. So I'll read through the rest of these reappointments. Just uh, we can do them all as one. I'm I'm going to bet. Yes. 
Okay, uh, so we have reappoint Ruth Furland, Robin Kendrick, and Jeanette Tisdale as members of the Council on Aging Board as noted on the attached sheet, correcting or superseding previous appointments. Uh, reappoint Victoria Brownell, Marion Ryland, and Bruce Wilbur as members of the Council on Aging Board, effective July 1st, 2020. Reappoint Travis Bowie, Nicole Bruno, Paul Denault, and Miriam Gurney to his Freetown Historical Commission, effective July 1st, 2020. Reappoint Peter Irwin and James Rezendis as associate members to the Historical Commission, effective Ju July 1st, 2020. Uh, reappoint Michael McHugh, Richard Medeiros, and Sandra Souza to Scholarship Committee. Uh, reappoint Nicholas Veloso to Zoning Board of Appeals, as noted on the attached sheet, uh, correcting and superseding previous appointments. Reappoint Swede Magnet as Associate Member, Zoning Board of Appeals. Reappoint Robert Jost as Associate Member, Zoning Board of Appeals. Reappoint Lisa Pacheco as Public Records Clerk for the Board of Selectmen. Reappoint Mike Mata as Public Records Clerk, Board of Assessors. Reappoint Mike McHugh as Public Records Clerk, Board of Assessors. And reappoint Trevor Matthews to EMA Public Safety. All of those are effective July 1st. There are a motion to approve as read. Motion, motion granted. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Selectman Grunwald? Yes. Selectman Chico? Yes. And Selectman Matthews? Yes. All right. Uh, next on the agenda is old business. I don't have any updates on any of those, so we can go into executive session if we're ready for it. Okay, just um, as a side note, uh, we will have a meeting next Monday. Um, this will be a working meeting. It will be um, to discuss, um, just to review things that we're working on, um, any questions that any of the board members have. We will not be voting on anything at that meeting, um, but it's just like to go over policies, procedures, and, and in case anybody has any questions on, on anything that we're working on, any ideas and any goals that we want to set for ourselves for the um, upcoming year. Uh, where are we? Where are we doing? You, we. Uh, where do you want to do it? Do you want to do it Zoom or do you want to do it at the gazebo? I'd rather do it at the gazebo. Okay. Okay. Yep, I, I agree. Okay, perfect. So, can you set that up, Tim? Yep. And you uh, just to confirm, you want it at the the pavilion at the COA? Gazebo, okay. pavilion. I don't know if you wanted it over here, so. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, uh, I'm in, on vacation on Monday. Uh, I can participate through Zoom if you, or I can drive out. I don't care. I'm, no, I'm, you're on vacation. I don't want you to drive all the way out here. But um, you can either Zoom or if we, you know, I, that's that's. I mean, we're not going to be making any decisions. So um, we'd be more than happy to have you Zoom in if you want. All right, I'd, I'd like to do that. Okay, perfect. All right, um, I will entertain a motion to go into executive session um, and not return into open session. Um, and I just have to grab my agenda, sorry. Okay. Lucy, you're muted again. <laughs> How did I do that? <laughs> Um, I'll, did you hear anything I said? Nope. Okay, sorry. Um, I'll entertain a motion to go into executive session and not to um, reconvene an open session for Mass General Law Chapter 30A, Section 21A3 to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining with the Freetown Police Association because an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining position of the public party and the chair so declares and the chair so declares. Do you have a motion? motion granted. Do you have a second? Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Selectman Grunwald? Yes. Selectman Matthews? Yes. And Selectman Pacheco? Yes. All right, and uh, just uh, so you can disclose to everyone who else will be uh, entering into executive session with us? Would be um, Ali Galtz Carlton and Brian Masser, um, counsel for the town. All right. So I will stop the recording. Uh -oh. One note, uh, I, I just read today an article somewhere about the Zoom uh, not being very secure. So we might want to think about what we do in the future on, on these meetings, especially uh, meeting like we're going into now. 
if, uh, if it's very sensitive material? Uh, we're actually, uh, they do have end-to-end -end encryption for paying customers and we, we've had an account from the very beginning, so I think we're, we're safe here. Uh, we've, uh, okay. There's a bunch of different procedures that you can take to prevent the whole Zoom bombing thing that was going around and we haven't had a problem with it since we started. Yeah, there, so. there was a real concern about it when everybody started to get on. They had made a statement to the effect that it was end-to-end -end encryption, which wasn't necessarily the case. They had people coming on literally uh, uh, invading meetings and in, in doing things they shouldn't be doing. All of that is now done. They have a whole set of patches that put in the system and it is totally secure at this point. Oh, good. Thank you. Thank you, George. I think it's important. Thank you.